Hey everybody, it's Sean with The Verge. I'm here with Apple's new iPad Pro. This is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It's the larger one, uh, but it's smaller than the old 12.9 inch iPad Pro. This one is actually about the size of a sheet of paper. This thing is really thin. It's 5.9 millimeters. It's got a camera bump. That's a 12 megapixel camera right there. You can see it's got these LTE lines, which are not beautiful, but there they are. And the uh, smart connector has been redesigned. It actually, instead of at the bottom, it's on the side now. So when you plug it in to the new keyboard case, it goes there, bang it out. Now it's in the keyboard case, smart connector on the side. So you notice there's no home button here. It's the same gesture controls as the iPhone 10, 10s, 10R. So I can open an app here, that's great. Swipe around, swipe up to go home. If I swipe and hold, I get the app switcher. I can pick this photo of Becca again. I can swipe from the bottom and go to another app real fast. That stuff is all super cool. I can also grab mail, put it over here, and get the little pop-over view of mail. I can go home. Now that I've got that, you can slide mail over in the actual side-by-side -side view. Then I can swipe between apps here. So you see here, there's Becca, there's that. Then I can go back. My space has been maintained. So very familiar uh, multitasking setup to previous iPads, but now you can do it a little bit faster with the gesture support and no home button. Uh, Apple has totally re-engineered the screen. It's what they're calling a liquid retina screen. It's the same idea as the iPhone XR. It's got pixel mask rounded corners. There's also Face ID right here. This is the Face ID system. This is technically the top of the iPad. The Face ID will work in landscape. They actually say it'll work any way that you hold it, which is super cool. And you've got USB-C on the bottom, which is super exciting. An important note, this is not Thunderbolt 3 like Apple does on its laptops. This is USB-C. Apple says it's USB 3.1 Gen 2. So it supports 10 gigabit transfers and uh, it's optimized for file transfer and display port. So you can run a 5K monitor off of this and you can plug in a camera. We've got a camera over here and turn on. I took a picture of Becca earlier. I'm just gonna plug it in. And you can see just like the old SD card adapter uh, for the iPad, it's gonna pop right into photos, open photos. And I can grab this photo I took of Becca, hit import. Bang, I'm importing it right off of that Sony camera over there. So keep it, and I can go into photos. There's a girl, look at that. <laughs> Nailed it. There's still no file system here. When you plug in a hard drive, it's not gonna do anything. If you plug in a printer, Apple said, we'll find out what happens together. So it's really optimized for smaller class of peripherals. If you're looking at cameras, you're looking at monitors. Those are big deals for the iPad. It has not been able to support all of those things in the past. We're gonna plug in a lot more stuff. Every app can add its own support for peripherals over USB-C. So we'll plug in a lot of stuff and see what works, but app developers are gonna have to do a lot of the work here. The iPad Pro, the 12.9 here, starts at $999 for 64 gigs of storage. There's a smaller 11-inch version. It's the same physical size as the old 10.5 with a bigger display. That smaller one starts at $799 for 64 gigs. Inside, you've got an A12X Bionic processor. The X line is Apple's beefed up version of the A12 in the uh, iPhone 10s and 10R. Apple says these are faster than 92% of portable computers shipped today. They really, really want you to think about this in comparison to a PC and not other tablets. That's why they've got USB-C, that's why they're pushing its performance specs, that's why they had Adobe on stage to show off Photoshop. They actually have a video of Photoshop on the iPad that you should check out. And that's why here, when I'm talking to them, they're showing me Lightroom CC on the iPad. Apple also has a new Apple Pencil, which is honestly way nicer than the old pencil. It's kind of a matte finish, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, it's flat on one edge, which makes it easier to hold. It charges magnetically, there's none of that old lightning port stuff going on. So I just click it in, you can see it drops. Apple Pencil, 97%, that's super cool. If I'm on the lock screen here, I can just tap on it. There it goes, it opens the notes. I can right away, hello, that's super cool. If I double tap on the pencil, it'll switch to the eraser. It's gone, I can double tap, switch back to the pencil, and now I'm writing again. That's super cool, it's something people have wanted for a long time. And then I can close it up, it's still locked, it's still ready to go. I can put the pencil back on top of it, it's charging again. And then, this isn't programmed to my face, so I'm gonna grab my friend Steven over here, and we're just gonna have him unlock it. So he's looking at it, swipe up, 
unlocked Face ID works like a charm just as fast as the 10s 10R. So that is the iPad Pro, $799 for the 11 inch 64 gig version, $999 for this 12.9 inch version at 64 gigs. It looks pretty cool. We got to get one. We got to plug all kinds of stuff into it. Uh, we got to see what USB-C on this thing can really do. And I personally am going to have to get over the lack of a headphone jack. So there's the true depth sensor here. So it also supports an emoji, of course. I like to be this fox. What's really interesting is Apple had to recalibrate the system so you're not looking at it off axis because the camera is over here, not at the top in landscape. That's pretty neat.